think it will be of some interest uh, to talk about uh, my family. Let me say that my father was born in the north of France, my father Richard Goldson, and my mother was born in Paris. Uh, her own parents were also of Parisian extraction. Uh, that uh, we were four children. I had a sister, Alice, who was two years older than a brother who is about, I say about, five or six years younger, and a sister. Well, I should have named my brother Edouard or Edward. Uh, my sister Alice married Georges Contré, who was from Bordeaux or nearby, exactly from Cognac. Georges Contré was a pharmacist. And uh, during the World War, he served as a captain in the medical corps. They had no children. Uh, my younger sister, Leah, married Georges, no, Albert Zender. He was from Normandy, but of Alsatian extraction. I uh, <clears throat> studied in France, went to college in France, particularly to the Lycée La Canale at the outskirts of Paris, where I passed my Baccalaureat or bachelor degree. Eventually entered the service of the French government's financial agency in Cairo, which was set up in connection with the handling of what is known as the Egyptian debt contracted, that is to say by the Egyptians, the debt contracted by the Egyptians in relation to the construction of the Suez Canal. I remained in Egypt about a year Following which, I decided to discover America. And that's how I landed first in New York and eventually in Colorado where Friends of my father were working large silver and lead mines. This brought me first to Denver, attached to the 
American smelting and refining, which was controlled by the Guggenheim, and then to the Cripple Creek and Lentville districts, where I spent several years. Eventually, this led to my drifting down to Mexico where the same company had large mining interests. This I have related in my memorandum on the Villa and O'Bregan affairs. My first uh, position was as assistant to the manager in Santa Barbara, state of Chihuahua. During my years <coughs> in Mexico, I kept up my relations in France where I still had a number of friends and some relatives and thus I took trips to Europe every year, no, not as often as that, every two years or so. One of those trips led me to visit a distant relative, French extraction of distant French extraction, and brought about my meeting of my of Malvin, my future wife, whom I married. 65 years ago that is to say 65 years from this year 1971 she was about 18 and I took her down to Mexico, where I had quit the American smelting in order to go into the mining promotion business. Born in Vienna in 1980, in 1888. My mother being Czech. Your father first. My, my father was born in Paris, I think. He was born in 
Oh, I think he was born in Vienna. No, he was in Vienna. Well, I may be I wrong. don't know. And my mother was born in Czechoslovakia, in Shushice, where my grandfather had big property of different, uh, a match factory, uh, porcelain factory. And the Budweiser, it was a partner of the Budweiser beer factory. So all vacations we spent with my grandparents, and I learned Czech. I learned Czech before I spoke German. When the time came for us to start the school, we were sent to the Sacred Heart. The three sisters, my sister, my older sister Irma, myself, and my youngest self, sister Selma. We finished our school years there. I was sixteen. And I started a business course for one year just so as to be busy. My father believed in the girls being busy. That way I met my husband. There was quite a big family of my mother's. My mother's name was Fit. Then my husband and I left for Mexico. The first, uh, he passed through San Francisco the year of the earthquake to pick me up in Vienna when we got married in 1906. And then went to Mexico because he had property down there and he was employed down there. No, I had property, I was employed by myself. Well, you were employed to begin with. I had been employed, but oh, the you way had... you're telling it, it's after I was married that I was employed, the, the way you're tell, telling it, don't you see? No, that's not the way I mean it. Well, that's why I'm telling, straightening you out. I think gender the right. I was my own, I was, I was my own boss. Mm -hmm. He had a side partner who was a f Frenchman and Buddha, mm -hmm. and who lived with us in a very big house we had at the mine, which was very interesting. I had, I was not feeling good. When they found out that I was pregnant, then I came back and my baby was born in Los Angeles. We went back to Mexico, then the revolution broke out, so we had to get out. And we stayed in Los Angeles while you pursued your property and all the money of the French company down Mexico. How did you get out during the revolution? During the revolution? In a covered wagon. We had to get out. We got in out. an old stagecoach of the days of Napoleon, you know, that stagecoach? Yes, we said. Yes, indeed. But then we only had Charles. That's and true, child. He was the only child at the time. Yes. You had to get out because you were responsible. Well, we didn't go out really? that way. There were quite dramatic moments before yes, we indeed. went out. Don't you remember when I went after Mrs. Moore's and she was hiding under the bed in her yes, house? Yes, your marriage's wife, they had a house about... Well, but I mean, minutes. I mean, how many anecdotes there And you are. wanted them to come over to our house. Yes, well, But she wasn't coming she to, she had they nothing... To the rebels wouldn't shoot at her, she never did anything and wrong. And they started shooting right through her and house. And the bullets came through the, the, the window and the door. So then the family came over. We got out when Charles was a baby, having a few pennies left from what the bandits had left us, and I had sewed up the paper money in the hem of my skirt, and hoping on the way to find food for the child. I had a bottle of malted milk to give him, but that was all we had, thinking that the different ranches we had to go by to get to El Paso, I would be able to get food for us but they had all been burned out. So we slept on the floor under the wagon 
two nights, then we got to El Paso, the armistice had been signed. So we stayed in El Paso and you tried to get back to save what was saved. But in the meantime, they had burned out the house. They had taken all my wedding presents, my silver, my beautiful china and linen, everything, and my burned, music. Burned all our burned all our all documents, all our papers. All our papers. Even the piano they had taken on mules back. I had a nice piano I had played right along. They even took that away. When we got to El Paso, they had decided in France for you to come. Well, we got to France that way. Toute jeune mariée avant que la révolution n'éclate, en une période peu ordinaire, 